Hey, today we're doing a service and repair on a 99 VW Transporter 2.5 litre petrol and I think it's got the 01P transmission in it. Now what's happening with it, it's jumping out of top gear and also there's a bit of a flare happening between the shifts as well. Now he's got shift problems so we're just going to put the scanner on it and just see if we can get any codes out of it. The OBD plug's just here on the steering wheel console, you just pull that little plug out like so. And we've got a fault code, a PO double one nine two at access we've got to take this big stone guard off the transmissions here on the left side so we'll just remove these bolts that stone guard off there are six bolts and it'll actually hang on this little clip there so you need to push that out and it comes out through the front of the vehicle underneath um, these little slots here there, there'll be like a little plate that hangs in there just so it doesn't drop down on your head and you can see there they are at the back there and the front one comes in through here the cover off you can see there's a little filler plug here on the front of the transmission and you basically what you do is you fill it there and there's a little tube in here and that measures the height of the the fluid level so you've got to take this plug out to to see that the, the oil trickling out there seems to be a bit of an oil leak somewhere as well so i'm just going to give it a good blow out first and then we can take the transmission pan off okay we've got the pan off you can see there are tiny little silvery i don't know if you can see that little silvery specks in there and also the ma magnets completely covered so probably a solenoid issue and there are seven solenoids in these they also have this very very flimsy and delicate strap there that connects the, the wiring these are known to become hard brittle and to crack over time and give you problems and the filters just pull out of these you can see the seal still remained in there so you want to make sure that that seal is holding the filter up adequately as well or it's going to be sucking air I'm on the ATSG manual and this is for an O1M transmission which is very similar to the O1P and you can see here's the clutch and brake application chart then by cross-referencing that information by process of elimination you can usually work out which solenoids you need to replace and just here it shows you a description of what each of those solenoids does and the solenoid application chart and here is the location of the solenoids you can see where they are and two down here there are seven solenoids but two are the same and the other five are the same if you want to check it while it's in the vehicle there's a pin location and we've got basically you can see uh, the two that are the same the EV6 and the EV4 are the same and the other ones are all the same and you've also got your fluid temperature sensor and that needs to be checked as well and there's a location it's on the EV7 line or the N94 And there's the five solenoids that are the same. It just shows you the operation of it. And 
and the regulator solenoids. These two are the same, interchangeable. Now I'm just going to take these little clips out and like I mentioned earlier you've got to be very gentle with this strap because it can break on you quite easily and these ones you can actually replace the solenoids while the uh, valve body is in, in place. So it's a little bit, little bit squishy because the transmission is right in the corner of the hoist there. So gently, these are the PWM ones uh, the, with the black, black on the plug, there are two of those. And to get the, because I've got to replace a couple of them, you've got to actually take the strap off all the solenoids just so you don't damage it while you're replacing the other ones. So you just gently try not to break these clips off. And there we go. They just come out like that. There we go. Try not let that wobble around too much. I've just loosened the last of the straps, which is that middle one. And you can see that just hangs away there. Try not let it swing around too much or bump it too much because, like I said, you can crack that plastic quite easily. Now it's just a matter of taking these little Torx bolts off and then you can slide that solenoid out. And there are T20 Torx, these. Just a matter of undoing these little spring steel clips that hold it in. Your T20s. Now I've just loosened them up a bit. And you can see they just slide out quite easily. They just hang on to them so they don't slide out. Oh. You can see that's got the black plug on it. And the on off ones. I've got like a little, little uh, I think it's copper plated ball inside. Once that copper plating goes they're known to leak. So the Sonax S-O-N-N-A-X site they have sealed plugs they have like a little o-ring on there sometimes these end plugs and at the front here they will leak so you can get a an improvement kit to fix these sometimes but these valve bodies are pretty prone to wearing out as well so you need a vacuum test um, all the little valve channels there now generally speaking these solenoids uh, should have the same coloured plug you can see there's the old one it's got a black black plug on it and this one's got a sort of browny coloured one and the shift one is a white plug but that could be just the oil stained it that way so it's got that on the end another thing to note the diameter of these ones PWM are just slightly bigger than these so If you try and mix it up, you'll find that that one won't fit in there, in that sleeve anyway. So, just slide straight in there. And the other one will fit, the shift one will fit in both, but it'll be a bit sloppy. They are little bolts so you don't have to tighten the hell out of them, just, just nicely. The clip off there, 
and I'm going to replace the two torque converter clutch solenoids which are the EV4 and the EV7 that one and that one there and I've just taken that one out and what I might also do is just flush demagnetize and just flush these other ones as well this one out I just need to take that bolt out there just so I can slide that out one is a T30 and I've just washed uh, basically just washed these ones and you can see how much their magnets underneath our wash tray you can see how much muck has come off I'll wipe that up now and then we'll demagnetize these and then wash them again um, that's without any air pressure or anything like that to flush out any of that muck. And you'll see that by demagnetizing you'll get a lot more rubbish out of the out of the solenoid. What actually happens is that very fine metal is the stuff that actually gets magnetized and then it just sits in there. Um, if you don't demagnetize it, it'll just roll around in there, you can't clean it out as well. But ideally, the only way you can really flush these out properly is to pull them apart. So you can see I've washed the tray there, and I've washed these and blown them out as best as I can without, this is before demagnetizing. Got our little demagnetizer. I'm just holding that button down there. You can see it actually, and I just. Roll it around on there. See, so there's already a bit of dirty solvent coming out of it. Now this is without any air pressure, um, you can see that it's already accumulating fine metal in there. So just under the wash, our wash, um, parts washer pressure, it's knocking out a little bit of fine metal. It's not, not a lot, and I'll just show you. You can see it's still got that fine metal out of it. So now I'm going to just give it a blast with the air pressure and, and do the whole thing again just to try and get out as much as I can. There we go, nice and clean. You should be able to hear it clicking. These are just on-off solenoids. You can actually make a little tester. We do have a little tester there. A little tester that we've got. And basically the way it works is you put, there's a little O-ring in there that seals it. You put your solenoid in there. Tighten it up. Just so it holds there. I'm putting air through it, and you can see it's bleeding off. I'll just put some power on it there. I'm putting the air through now. And now, I'm hitting the switch. And you can see it, that one's not leaking at all. You can 
and even here it uh, needs the air to work. But anyway, it shows how you can demagnetize and clean solenoids out more efficiently. Um, but it's still important to test them, air pressure test them. Uh, if they're PWM or linear solenoids, you need to test them with amperage, not with voltage. These are on-off solenoids, so you can just test them with 12 volts. Uh, I like to test them at about 8.5 volts, so you know it's getting full power under, you know, when it's 12 volts or 14.3 volts, which is what a normal battery in a car runs at. Always important to um, warm these up as well because sometimes they fail under heat. Okay I've replaced the EV7 and the EV4 and we've flushed out, demagnetized and flushed all these out and bench tested them all. Uh, just make sure you put that T30 bolt back in and I've double checked double check and triple check your work as you go along I've tightened up all these T20s and, and over here I've just popped this seal out I'm going to replace that as well and we can put it back together when I'm putting this um, wiring loom back on the strap so make sure you blow it out if it's especially if it's been leaning over here. I put it over here just so I kept bumping it and I don't like bumping it because they are very very delicate. All blown out nicely and these just slowly clip back in. They go in quite easily and you'll hear it or feel it click. A good idea to put this end one in so it doesn't jump around as much. Strap's not going to hit anything. Another good thing to do is just to knock that, that plug out as well while you're there. Um, you can, if you end up doing it from the outside, you can break these little lugs there that locate it. So it's actually better while the pan's off to take it out and pull it apart if you're going to re-salvage it. Otherwise just buy a new one I suppose. And another thing that's a good idea to do on these is pull that plug because they're exposed to the elements. Just pull that plug out, clean it all up, spray a bit of WD-40 or CRC in there as well. Good idea. Okay I've got the new filter on. And I've taken out the filler tube there. You take it out like this, um, you, you won't damage these little clips here. You see one was already broken. And also I've replaced the, the O-ring on it. You can see it's flattened out and it's hardened. So the new one's a little bit raised. So possibly it was leaking at that seal as well. So it's a good idea to just whiz that out while you've got the pan off. Later on it's a little bit more difficult to, to remove this cap here uh, while it's in the vehicle. Sometimes when you're tapping it out you'll end up breaking these lugs off. And I've got the filter, the pan all clean. Don't forget to put these little spacer stops there otherwise you'll crush that seal right down. And I'm just going to check to see if that magnet's not in the way of anything. I like to leave it up like that so the magnet can work underneath and on top. Now I've just put the tube in. When you're pushing the tube in, make sure you wiggle it slowly and keeping the tension on there so you don't cut that seal at the bottom there. So now I'm going to put some... Tritec semi-synthetic fluid in it. There it is, it's the ATF Universal mineral base and so it's a semi-synthetic semi fluid. 
temporarily I'm just going to put the plug in and the idea is is to fill it until it starts coming out of that tube and the motor has to be running when uh, when you measure it and then it should be just trickling out of there so I'm going to put a bit of oil in it first so I can start it up keep the motor running and then I'll just take that plug out and then I can keep filling it over here at the front until I see it just trickling out of there. Okay, I've just put about three litres in and the oil's just coming out of here now so it'll still be a little bit low so now I'm going to just pump, pump a little bit more in probably another half a pump and then I can start the vehicle up and have the motor running while I check that. And just select through the gears. Right down. A few times. And back in the park. Handbrake on as well. And now I'm just going to check the oil level, make sure it should be just trickling out of there. Nothing yet. Putting another half a pump in. And another half pump. That's about four litres. Four and a half. There we go. Just starting to drip there now, if you can see that. Five and a half litres. It still hasn't warmed up properly, so that oil will expand and the oil level will be up a bit higher. So when you see it just dribbling it through like that, that should be okay. And we're on about 38 degrees, so it's pretty close, up to 40. I'm going to go for a test run now. I'm going to just put this plug in. I'm not going to put the locking locking plate in. Just that one so I can re-measure re it. There we go. Back from test run. No oil leaks. Especially at the front there. We can put that locking plug back on the filler there. And I've also had the scanner on it just to make sure that torque converter clutch fault hasn't returned, which it hasn't. Just got to put the cover back on. Remember when you're putting it in, you hook, hook this in here. And then hook it over this little plate there just until it holds it there and then you can have it up. I'll put the horn just hanging over there while I test drive it too, so that, that has to be bolted back up as well. And just finally, um, the oil level, when you're testing that, it's got to be between 35 and 45 degrees. If it's at 50 degrees or over 45 degrees, you've got to let it cool down and then just recheck it. Uh, when, I, when I did it, it was pretty, pretty good. There we go, we poke these in through here. And then you can come around the front, and there's this. There you go, you see that? You just clip that in like that, and that just holds it up until you get the bolts up. Anyway, thank you for watching.